In this video, I go through some upcoming NFT projects that I'm watching very closely that are launching over the coming weeks. I'm going to go through exactly what their white paper is saying, some of the sneak peeks as well, a little bit about their roadmap. And also later in the video, I'm going to go through the winners of the last couple of YouTube videos where I ran an offer for whitelist spots as well. So the first one we want to discuss today is Kazekai Collective and I'll leave the links for all of these below. First one I want to discuss is Kazekai Collective and I'll leave all of their Twitter links below so you can have a look through and do your own research as well. Now this is one I'm watching at the moment and if you have a look on their Discord, I've had a look at some of the sneak peeks in terms of artwork first, in terms of the pictures and it's kind of again anime art meter which is what we're looking at here. Now they've done a little bit of work in terms of the story in the background. They've got a white paper and I've had a look through that as well. I'm hoping they're going to add some more details when it comes to this. But obviously it's very, very early stages with this particular project. So I'm expecting this to come in the coming days and weeks. And I believe their Discord is open as well to the public. So you can join there and find out more information. It's also worth noting as well that the two creators and the, the co-founders, it looks like they're newer in the space when you have a look at their uh, following and their previous experience as well. So um, I would keep this in mind as we go towards launch. It would probably, it's gonna be a longer process for them in terms of launch. Because if you have a look at the uh, mint dates and stuff, that's yet to be announced and the mint price yet to be announced as well. That I'll be looking at. I like the fact that the supply is smaller. So five and a half thousand supply rather than say 10,000 or 20,000. I think that's definitely a good thing. And as I say, they've only really released the first chapter of the story here in the medium. So I'd expect them to release a little bit more in terms of information as we go forward. Because I really want to know what the background is in terms of the artwork, uh, where the inspiration came from and what they have in the pipeline in terms of roadmap going forward. You'll see some other information in their Our Vision section of their Discord as well, which gives you a little bit more in terms of background information. But it's these two chapters that I'm looking forward to uh, them releasing. So as I say, very, very early stages, but sometimes when a project's very early in terms of their launch, that's sometimes the best opportunity to get involved with the project as well. So like I said, the Twitter link is below if you want to check that one out. Next one to discuss is Third Eye Club. Uh, and at the moment here on Twitter, you can see they have just approaching a shy under 80,000 followers here on Twitter. Lots of engagement from uh, day one on some of their posts. And I, like, I love the artwork. Uh, I'm always looking for something that's a little bit more unique. And in general, this seems to tick the boxes. But... Nowadays, artwork uh, projects alone, PFP alone, that's not good enough. So it's important to see what else they're offering in terms of roadmap, uh, the style of their launch, um, details, mid price, supply, stuff like that. And also um, what their vision is in general for this particular project. So let's have a look through that now for this particular project. Main places I, look, I like to look at are either website. Sometimes, however, website tends to be one of the last things uh, the projects develop just before launch as well. So that might not always be available. And obviously Discord as well, which is of course sometimes locked. So you might not be able to get much information there either. Um, my advice to some, some collections, not Third Eye Club in particular, but others is if you are locking your Discord, you need to make sure there is information somewhere publicly available. For example, a white paper or a website, etc. Otherwise people are just left in the dark and um, it's good to be mysterious and stuff, but you don't want to be too mysterious to the point that nobody knows what your, what your project is all about. And having a look at the Third Eye uh, Club here, you can see on their website, they've already got the uh, roadmap team etc let's have a look at the team first um, and they're mentioning here they're illustrators developers founders uh, etc now this is not a docs team from what i can see and you can see here from the team a lot more information twitter links as well for team members instagram so it's kind of like a partially doxed uh, from from what it seems here and if you have a look through it you can uh, go ahead and have a look at some of the artwork there as well which i think is uh, really important um, not a massive following here on uh, Instagram, but when you have a look at the artwork, um, it does, does look really, really cool uh, in terms of ideas and stuff. So um, I do like that. Uh, and I do like, I mean, especially uh, nowadays uh, when it's mostly focused on artwork alone, you really need to be sure that the artwork is coming from a well-renowned artist as well, or somebody who has a, a lot of experience um, and they've shared a lot of their um, art features before, either on Instagram, Twitter, etc. This is another team member as well who's a photographer, art director. And if you have a, a look uh, further down, so this is mostly a post obviously related to photography. 
uh, which might not be directly obviously relevant to the project. But let's have a look at the roadmap. So they say this uh, focuses on a strong community which of course is uh, for every uh, particular project. And I think the approach they're taking is creators club. So like a network for creators and artists, which I think is uh, definitely a good idea. It is one that's been done before in the space. So it's not, it's not uh, completely unique there in particular, but it's all about how they're going to do it. Are they going to make, are they going to solve the problem of uh, networking and connecting within the NFT space? Are they going to do a better job of solving that problem? Those are the things I'd be looking to understand more. Now, that's if I'm involved long term, by the way. If you're looking to do a short term play on these types of collections and stuff, you don't really need to know year, you know, months or years down the line what they're intending to do. However, to create that interest and hype at the beginning, if they are offering something in that sub niche of creators type NFTs that is a little bit different, that's where I'm particularly interested. They discuss a premium art book and annual magazine as well for holders. Also physical products available uh, like clothing, accessories, etc. So merchandise, which is again what a lot of artwork uh, uh, communities offer at the moment and artwork NFTs. And they've already stated uh, here clearly, which I like that for the people who hold the first collection, they will get a free airdrop for a, a third eye parasite NFT. Almost, it sounds like almost like a mutant ape uh, a variety of versions. So they've stated that clearly here, which is really good. And they're looking to develop physical art as well, along with artwork, print and art development. So that's the third iClub. And again, I'll leave the link in the description below. I always tend to link the Twitter because that tends to be the, the home base almost, or almost like the uh, project's website. Every NFT project should have Twitter. And that's the main, main place where people uh, network with these uh, uh, particular uh, companies and NFT projects, find out more information, get all of the other links, etc. So that's, that's what I tend to link. And then from there, obviously, you've got website links, Discord, etc. Um, the third project I want to discuss, and this is Bone Ducks. Uh, again, I'll link it below in the description. And again, looking on the Twitter link, you've got website, you've got the white paper as well. So if you open these up, whilst that's just opening, I'm just going to show you a little bit about the artwork, which again, is really, really, really cool. Uh, and this is more kind of pixelated, animated type artwork. And you see this this type of artwork, especially in terms of P2Es, uh, 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 gaming and stuff like that. Their Discord, by the way, is currently locked as well, which they, they've stated there clearly. So in terms of having a look at the white paper, got here the numbers, so 6,555. Generation O owners will have the ability to stake their ducks to passively earn what they call snails. So basically dollar sign then snails. So that's their tokens in this particular uh, project or ecosystem. And Duck Survival Game introduces a multi-character game mechanics that allow uh, players from different tribes to mint new NFTs from their staking rewards. And then they talk further in this white paper about the different characters in this particular game, including Apex and Scavengers as well, and the specifics, the tokenomics when it comes to that. So uh, a lot more detail they provide in terms of how it's going to work. And I like that, I like that, rather than they're just leaving it um, uh, to work out the details later or not discussing it beforehand with potential NFT investors, which I don't think is a good thing. And a uh, bit more details about the snail uh, token here, it's an ERC20 token. They're discussing some utility maybe in the future, so future uh, art drops, mini games and updates. And then some more details about how everything will be split up in terms of whitelist, allow list, public mint, etc. So lots of information there and obviously you've got the official links there as well. So this is one I'm watching closely because it's P2E and I'm always curious uh, P2E when it comes to uh, tokenomics, how they structure it. Is it something a little bit different? Because the problem you have with these tokens is they are inflationary in nature. So trying to work out exactly how you're going to build in utility is always a challenge. Why is it a challenge? Well, let's say in this particular NFT, they have six and a half thousand uh, or what have you, and they're offering a certain number of uh, snail tokens every single day. Now, if the um, uh, NFT investors, if the uh, uh, NFT holders have nothing to do with those snail tokens, what are they going to do? They're just going to dump them. That's why you have to constantly be working on utility when it comes to these types of tokens. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And even if it's a P2E and there's a game already developed, that's not enough anymore. Six months ago or something like that, you know, when Wolf Game first came, that was enough uh, to start with that as a basis. But now because everybody's got their own type of tokenomics, their own ecosystem, it's very difficult to launch these type of projects unless you have utility already set up at the beginning rather than later down the line. So that's 
my kind of feelings uh, around bone ducks there as well. Before I discuss their last project, a couple of giveaways I ran in my last couple of videos. So let's just quickly announce the winners. So for the first one, 327 unique uh, comments. So let's quickly pick a winner. The winner is I am. If you could please uh, email us, uh, admin at chartingwizards.com. And for the second video as well, my most recent video, uh, again, we'll just run for that one too. This particular one, 297 comments. Let's start the competition. And Harish is the winner. So again, same instructions. And we'll save your YouTube channel link as well. Final project I wanted to cover was Moonzy NFT. Uh, they got a very big following of nearly 130,000 followers. And I like that at the top there, they've got their art director and a separate Twitter profile there as well. Now, looking through this, I'm liking the artwork again. It's uh, kind of cool and funky looking artwork. So uh, that I definitely don't mind. I think that's a, a plus for this particular one. Um, and, you know, animated designs, they're, they're getting more popular now in the NFT uh, space. Uh, but still not not that uh, common in my opinion. They've also done some really good collabs with other projects like Karafuru for example as well. And it's another one who have their Discord currently locked at the moment. So it's not available for public access. But like I mentioned before, um, earlier on in the video, I think it would be good if they had the website up and ready and running. I'm not 100% sure if it is because really when people look at this and they don't have more information, they'll look past it and start looking at uh, other uh, options. Now I have more information because we've been speaking to this particular team and we've managed to secure um, whitelist spots as well for our holders. So I'll share some of that information with you. But I just think in general for public members, it should really be available. But this is the information they shared with me, which is the official Moonzy white paper, which I, again, I think should be clear and linked um, on their Twitter as well. So it's a P2E battle royale game built on decentralized network. And I think the numbers they mentioned to us were around five and a half thousand. So that's a, a, a decent number in terms of supply. So that's definitely a good thing. And they've separated um, the Moonsies into three different factions. Again, I love the artwork here. So Gaia, Helios and Poseidon. There'll be an integrated marketplace for users to trade and other in-game digital items as well. So they're already working on the entire uh, ecosystem, which I, I think is really, really cool. It's a playful, uh, playable NFT character, transferable ERC721 in terms of token. They talk a little bit more about the attributes there, which is all well and good. And this is the Moon Gem token. So this is going to be their particular um, token uh, within the game. And you've got the hard cap there. And for every in-game transaction, this is the distribution. So you got a certain percentage burned. So actually reducing the supply, uh, going back to stakers, Battle Royale Rewards Development Fund as well. And I like that, very, very clear. They're very clear on exactly what they're intending to do and how the tokenomics is going to work here, which as I said earlier in the video is really important. Um, otherwise you get this uh, inf inflationary model that's just slowly trending towards zero in terms of NFT value and coin value, which obviously none of the holders will want. And they go through the different phases in terms of setup and launch which I think is really cool as well. And by the way, just generally, the fact that they have such a detailed white paper already makes me more interested and my ears perk up with this particular project. That's what I want to see. It's no good just throwing a, a white paper out there with about two paragraphs uh, available. That's not good enough uh, for holders. They need to be more clear on information. It actually saves the founders of the project a lot of work as well because otherwise they have to answer loads and loads of questions in Discord explaining all of this stuff anyway where they could easily put it all together here in terms of information. And um, they talk about the test game in phase two as well, Battle Royale beta release, and certain select holders will be able to test, earn moon gems at an amplified rate, and then obviously moving on to their official game launch. So it doesn't look like the game will be ready at launch of the NFT, which is fine for a vast majority of P2E NFTs. That's not the case anyway. Finally, just a distribution uh, pie chart there as well. And the staking part is still a work in progress. So they're still working on that. And the same for governance as well. But again, really nice. And they go through all of the uh, team here, Twitter links, uh, etc., which is important. So you're, you're clear on who's bringing this uh, project to you. So I think overall, uh, really looking forward to this one and looking forward to see what they'll release near the time and then numbers, uh, um, you know, what the min price will be. We know what the supply is already, when they're looking to launch. So a really good project there as well. Let me know if you're looking at any of these in the comment section below and any other projects you'd like me to review. Just comment them below and I'll do my best to get to them. Thanks very much for listening.